from Appleton, Wisconsin. This is the Anderson Pens Podcast. Welcome to Anderson Pens Podcast, episode 442 for Thursday, June 2nd, 2022. This week we have banter news updates, my ink of the week, new Schaefer ink colors, a beautiful new Edison, transparent yellow from Twisby, a contest winner, a new contest, plus, as far as I know, nothing that is coming soon. Hey, Eric. Hey, Ryan. What do you call a hen that counts her eggs? Uh, what? A mathema chicken. A mathema chicken. Hey, Brian. <laughs> yes. When does a joke become a dad joke? When it becomes apparent? That's the old one, but it no longer <laughs> needs to become apparent. A, dad, a, a joke becomes a dad joke now when it's full grown. <laughs> Brian, yes. <laughs> I don't think you saw the uh, location bumper, but you, you know of the location. I do. That it bumps. Yes. It's right down the street, block and a it half. It is. It's uh, across from the Trout Museum and the Children's Museum. This is Voyager's Bakery, kind of new in town. Yes, yeah. Took the place of the a The last a year candy. or so? Yeah, within the last year. Yeah. Took the place of a candy store. In fact, you still can see the outline of the candy store sign behind the Voyager sign. Uh, we've eaten there. Breakfast, we had breakfast there once. Breakfast yeah, yeah. Sammies, yeah. they call them. Sammies. And they were good. Very good. And then uh, last week I brought uh, uh, those cinnamon rolls were from there. I didn't I, I didn't make the connection that they were from there. So they were good, amazing. They, they yeah. were amazing. Yeah. Uh, let's go. <laughs> Scott. Um, Voyager's Bakery, our mission is to bring the community together around the table through curiosity and creativity on the plate. And those cinnamon rolls will do that. They're very sticky too. Very sticky. You, you have, have to, to eat you them have, in one go. Yes, I tried to. Uh, they, they were big, and so I tried to tear off a little bit and then eat it. But then I, I had to wash my hands. I ended up doing it. They're like very difficult. Four or five eat. times. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, Steph was there, and I sent one home for her, Joe. Um, and then I think that night I asked Joe, "Did did you happen to eat it with a knife and fork?" Because I was thinking that might be easier. He <laughs> said, "No, I ate it like a human." <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, June 3rd, is World Bicycle Day. Awesome. World Bicycle Day in April of 2018, the United Nations General Assembly declared June 3rd as International World Bicycle Day. Do you like bicycles? I ha happen to like bicycles. I, I think you have a couple of bicycles. I, a couple. Two. Yeah, I, Three? I have not. You, that I, well, you yourself? Yes. Two that I know of. But yes. one, uh, you keep threatening to bring out and it never makes it out. You Soon. have to take it, I, take it into the shop and have them give it a look over. Yes. That is tomorrow, June 3rd. This Saturday, June 4th, a, a day you will enjoy, National Hug Your Cat yes. Day. I think you do that every day. I though. try to. I try to. Um, I found statistics that say that over 2 million cat videos are on YouTube with over 25 billion combined views. And this statistic, <laughs> these were from 2015. 25 so the, that's why YouTube was invented, apparently. Uh, and June 4th is National Hug Your Cat Day. June itself is National Adopt a Cat Month. And I will mention that both of your cats were adopted. Yes, um, yes. Taken home from the shelter. Um, I recently learned that Max is a senior. I didn't know Max that. Is, Max is a senior. Yeah, he was eight when we got him, so he's, he's 10 now. Adopt Cat Month, sponsored or promoted by American Humane. American Humane celebrates Adopt Cat Month each June, a month that also marks the height of kitten season when large litters of kittens are born and often end up in animal shelters where you can find your you, next cat. You can get multiples at once. Which is what you did. In fact, <clears throat> you have Max and Seiko and they didn't know each other no. until you took them home. They were they were in the same room though with oh, 20 other cats. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So they, yeah. they had a chance to say hello. Yes. And they, they get along. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they get along. Yeah. Max is, he's, he's just, anyway, you have a special <laughs> announcement. Special uh, announcement. I do have a special announcement. Uh, this Saturday, June 4th, uh, Anderson Pens here in Appleton will be closed. So uh, if you are local to Wisconsin, you're thinking about driving up, we will be closed. This is a very rare uh, Unusual event. Unusual event that we uh, close on a Saturday. But uh, we haven't been closed on a Saturday in probably, I don't know, eight years maybe. Uh, but... Uh, uh, Chicago will be open. Online, of course, will be open, but uh, there will be nobody here at the store. So if you do drive up, uh, sorry, you'll <laughs> turn around and go to Chicago, go to Garden View, and yeah, Garden. Tell them, tell visit them, Ryan the, visit the museums. Yeah. Exactly. So or the bakery. the bakery. The bakery. I think they close at two, though. Well, so do we. 
Okay. <laughs> YouTube. Speaking of the cats on YouTube, we occasionally post things to YouTube. Last Friday, we posted Steph's top five pink inks, where she uh, un unveiled to the world the the Colorverse. <laughs> Fabulous Las Vegas. Well, you already, uh, you've already spoken about that. Yes, so it wasn't unveiled an unveiling. to the world. But, I don't know. Uh, it, every time you see it, though, it's like an unveiling. It's a gorgeous color. <laughs> don't you like it? I, of course you like it. Of course I like it. And last Sunday, we did our Anderson Penn Sunday brunch. It was menu nine, I believe. It was Fountain Pen Filling Systems Part One. Uh, yes. We are, and that was fascinating. There's a, there was a good number of them, too. There's a good number of them, and there will be a, an equally good number uh, in part two. We are skipping this Sunday uh, because of the holiday, but we will be back the Sunday after that with uh, Menu 10 and Fountain Pen Filling Systems Part 2, which, should I read them? Yeah, read them off. Uh, some of them I've heard of, and some of them I'm sure you've made up. <laughs> and they're, they're all early, too. Right, we kind of started with the modern ish. Yes, yeah, things and, that more people would be familiar right, with. Right, right. There were still some that I wasn't familiar with, but and there's a couple here that I know: crescent filler, lever filler, button filler, eyedropper filler, safety filler, uh, then sleeve filler, matchstick filler, coin filler, stud filler, capillary filler, trench filler. I think he's making that up. <laughs> Thumb filler, reverse lever filler, hump. Filler, saddle filler, blow filler, simplicity filler. I added syringe filler because we didn't have that. Oh, okay. I have a good one. I'll bring that. Do you have one? Okay. I might have one too. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Um, so that'll be part two. Yeah, that'll be fun. That's and that's all. The, the, if, a lot of those are going to be only on hard rubber pens, and it's going to be really right. Really and if cool. you haven't watched part one yet, it's I'm making him whenever possible fill it with water. Actually, demonstrate the filling system. Uh, I don't think you. I don't. I don't know how well it's going to go here, but uh, I, I have. We'll see. We'll I have see. examples of all those, except for I, I'm not certain about the blow filler, but that's because you made it up. I didn't you made it up. up. Speaking of ink, okay. Uh, this week's ink of the week is another Yurameku. Oh, I know this one. Last week I did Amamoyoi, and this week I'm I did Biakuya. Biakuya. Uh, what do you think? You you were interested in this one? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a purpley gray. You're kind trying to give it colors, huh? I'm, it's, well, it's kind of, it's light. Purpley gray, green gray. Yeah, purpley gray. I think I, the I'm, first two I'm calling colors that come to mind. Pretty much uh, very close to Amamoyoi, which I did last week, but it's a little lighter. So much so that mm -hmm. I think in a fine nib, it may n not be very legible. Yeah, it depends. But in your broad nibs, ink, yeah. in your broad nibs, it's fine. I wish it's, I wish some more of this green would would show on there. Well, uh, much like last week's, all the red, most of the red stayed on my hand, and everything else went on the paper. Um, but this is apparently not as saturated with color because I'm giving it a, a six as cleanup instead of a seven. It was a little bit easier to clean up. It's very complex and the more you look at it the more you see especially if you move it around there's a little pink uh, in there i'm not sure you want that in an ink but it is well, interesting for a swab um obviously there's uh no show through on an ink good flow no feathering it comes in a 20 milliliter bottle the bottles that i like the ice cube the little ice cube yep. bottles there. and i think we also sell the three milliliter samples yes right yes correct What does the corn say when it gets a compliment? Aw, oh, shucks. Mr. Anderson. Yes. You have some ink bottles over there. I've got three, but you have an empty one over there. I do. That's interesting in that it's broken. Oh, it's, it's not broken. It's not broken. So, yeah, this is, this is an old uh, uh, Schaefer script well. Uh, these came out originally around uh, 1934, 1935. This one's from the, the 50s. Uh, but they have this ink well, this glass oh. little well on the inside. It's like a well within the ink within bottle. Within the well, ink bottle. So when this bottle is full, you tip it upside down and then flip it back and then it fills this well on the side. And, and so then, you can put your pen just right in, in the there, well instead of, instead in the of the in down bottle. in there. Yeah. So. And the reason we're talking about this is we have previously talked about the Schaefer Bling. Uh, which is a black, but it has some shimmer to it, right? Yep. Yeah, it's got some sh some shimmer. But we, we finally got the new colors. I have Renegade Blue and Very Verde. Uh, I've got Amethyst. Which is mine. That's which my is favorite. not, which is not purple. 
uh, Retro Sunset, and then uh, the Inferno, which is uh, the one I'm, I'm most interested in trying. And I want the Amethyst. Um, I should mention they're not quite as big as the bottle we showed. No, no, these are 30 mil bottles. Are this is an older. Smaller. This is twice the size, uh, but a vintage. It's they're they're very cute. Yes, they're very cute. I, I was actually impressed with the bottle on them. So the bottle and the ink is good. Very good mm -hmm. ink. Put it in all your pens. Yes. You have a pretty blue pen over there. We should put some ink in that. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call this? This is oh. the Edison Collier. But the material. It's Azure, Azure Skies. Azure Skies. It's, it's very, it, it has shiny parts to it. Yes. So this, this origin, this color, uh, this material first came out, well, uh, at least in the production line uh, in the Perlette a number of years ago. Okay, that's the small... Which was the small cute, one cute that, 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 uh, that has been since uh, moved out of production line. But um, but yeah, so this is in, in a much bigger uh, bigger platform now. I think it looks great. It does look wonderful. Um, on this on this pen. It, it, it looked good on the Perlette, but I think it looks better here. Well, there's more to look at. Yes, it's wider. I mean, this is just outstanding. Look at yep. that. That's oh, great. Beautiful. It kind of looks like an Azure sky. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Rhodium plated trim, of course. Uh, single tone number six uh, Yovo uh, steel nib engraved with the Edison logo on it. Um, this is the, the Collier is probably the most popular Edison. It does not post. It does not post. That's correct. It's not designed to post, uh, but it's one of the most popular. It is the largest Edison uh, in in uh, the production lineup. You wouldn't need to post um, this. It yeah, it's well beyond that. It's oh. it's what a little bit over five inches. Right, five uh, inches and three thirty seconds. So cigar shaped fits fits nice in the hand. All kinds of nib options yes. on this. Uh, extra fine, fine, medium, broad, one point one, one point five. That's in steel. That's in steel. Uh, Eighteen carat upgrades in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, double broad, oblique, double broad, and one point one italic. What is oblique double broad? Oblique double broad is wide and at a slant, right? At a slant, yeah. yeah. And when they say oblique double broad, is it always a left foot or is it always a I right? I think foot? they're all always a left, left foot. I think they're Until left. you, how do you say you want the other kind? Very carefully. Very carefully. We'll look into it. But uh, the, uh, the eighteen carat nibs, uh, m many of them are special order, but we can get them for you. Cool. It's very cool. nice. It's a pretty pen. Very pretty. Yeah, kind of looks like candy. Oh, look, this is upside down. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, this is the official launch day for this. Is it launch day? It's okay. launch day. It's been for sale. It will be shipped next week. Yes. Uh, we were able to Tuesday. Pre Tuesday, I think, will be Tuesday shipping. of next week, but we were able to start pre-selling. Uh, I am, of course, talking about the Twisby Echo Transparent Yellow, another great Echo pen uh, from Twisby. This one, I'm very happy, transparent It's a bright, yellow. cheery color. Yes. It's a yes, bright, it's, cheery uh, color. I like... Bright, cherry colors. And You'd have to one. put like an orange or something in there. You can't put a, a dark ink in there. No, yeah. Orange, yellow. I mean, yellow is kind of hard to read, but... Probably a happier orange than the Kaveco Sun. No, there is no other orange. Well, that's a little dark. There's only sunrise orange. Let me tell you everything I know about the Twisby <laughs> Echo Transparent Yellow. The Twisby Echo in Transparent Yellow features a clear acrylic body, transparent yellow cap and turning knob, silver trim, a piston ink filling system, and a smooth writing steel nib. The clear body allows you to see the level of ink remaining in the pen at all times, something Lisa doesn't like. <laughs> The pen cap has an inner cap liner that maintains a seal when the pen is not in use. The traditional mechanism of the fountain pen, combined with a modern industrial design, embodies both the past and the present. This pen runs about the same length as a Diamond 580 and is just a tiny bit thinner. The Echo, of course, does not have a removable nib unit, and the barrel and nib unit are all one piece. Uh, nib choices include extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1 stub. We do not sell spare nibs for no, this pen no. because it's all one unit yep. um, it's just as cheap to buy a, a new you pen just buy a new pen yep. uh, these are great bargains great pens i think i should start collecting all the colors because these, i think you're late you're too late i can make it happen there is all sorts I of great ones that no longer are available i'll call philip <laughs> something just came in yes i'm not even prepared Literally, to talk about it but i know we talked about it last week Literally just came in Hour before you uh, you arrived, this is the it's Sailor pretty. Knight to E4 uh, Pro Gear, full size, twenty one carat nib. Uh, it has this lovely. It's like a dark 
gray charcoal, shiny it's charcoal. It's approaching black, but it's not yeah, black. Yeah, it's not it's quite. Not I thought black. it was going to be dark, but yeah, you look at it, it's... Sometimes it looks gray, and it, but it's a dark, dark yeah. gray, if anything. The, the most notice, noticeable thing here, though, of course, is uh, the metal section. Uh, you see this on the, the 1911 Black Luster, but this has been ion-plated gold. Uh, so it, it matches the trim, of course, but it adds a nice little weight. They said it was weighted. Uh, toward, the, toward the nib. Oh, interesting. Yes. Because yeah. usually these are very light. Uh, yes. This, I mean, it's not a 10-pound weight, but no, it's, it's no, just, no, no. just enough so that you notice that the pen wants to go to paper immediately. That's yeah. right something. Ah, yeah, this beautiful so, pen. Uh, Two-tone, 21-karat nib. we got the new style nibs on them. Uh, and then it also has on the top, it has the night oh, yes, emblem. The night on the top of the cap so and what nibs are available cartridge converter this is available in extra fine fine medium fine medium broad zoom in music and it comes in a special sleeve for your box with the uh night to oh, e4 it's beautiful is that the and numbered then, then oh. the numbered is on the box only 500 of these there's only 500 worldwide yep. and this is north american exclusive uh Believe or just so part of it's part of a part of the chess series. So the chess series, the first. So I, I don't know how many more that means we're going to get, but uh, this is the first knight to e4. Just came in today. Very nice. Very nice. How did the hipster burn his tongue? He drank his coffee before it was cool. We had a contest. La question last week. Yes. Do you, do you remember what it was? I do remember what it was. <laughs> what was the question? Um, how many pens does Brian have? That was not no. the question. No. Um, I wrote it down for you. Which right? pen would you save should disaster strike? Exactly. And I said that I'd come back this week with my answer, and I don't think you said you'd come back with your answer. You, I think you gave your answer last week. Uh, I, I, I would start, I'd punch out a window, and I would just start chucking Throwing them into them the off. backyard. I would right, just... So, okay. That's understandable. That's but understandable. I, I, I do have one, though. I, Which one? One pen I probably would pick would be the, the white Esther book that Lisa oh, and I... okay. This is sentimental. Sure, that was uh, sentimental. Many people said sentimental. I, I have chosen my Mont Blanc Petit Prince because of it's being a favorite pen. Okay. Uh, I picked favorite. You picked sentimental. 31% um, of our respondents uh, chose a pen that had sentimental value. Okay. And 36% chose a favorite pen but there was overlap here sometimes what your about favorite, the other 30 percent uh, i'll get to those oh the other 30 <laughs> uh sometimes your favorite pen is also a, a sentimental pen and sometimes a sentimental pen is also your favorite pen so there were the lines there were blurred a uh, seven percent said they were choosing their most expensive pen okay i can um, see that uh, five percent said they're choosing a pen that is irreplaceable which does make sense uh, five percent said they're picking the closest pen to them. <laughs> just grab just whatever. Grab the, grab the pen. <laughs> um, Two percent agreed with you. They're going to start throwing them out the window. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And fourteen percent said absolutely cannot decide. Just absolutely. That's, that's tough, though. It's I mean, tough. you know, I've got. Uh, and you know, the good news is we don't have. We don't to have decide. to. Hopefully, it doesn't ever decide. come to that. But it's not going to come to that. I've got grandparent uh, pens of my grandmother's pens of my father's you irreplaceable know, so. sentimental yeah maybe not your favorites yeah, but don't ever use them but yeah you know, it'd be nice have, to, they have it'd be nice to always have them brian marsh i'm going to read some comments brian by the way this brian needs to go with us to copper rock because yes b-r-y-a-n which is how they spell your name they always right. spell my name that way <laughs> yes they're waiting for brian marsh uh, whose comment was i can save only one pen I am with Brian. Why would I take one pen out of a case full of treasures to save? Pushed to choose, I would dither until the fire consumed me. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Handmade by Lorelei said, This has me thinking my current, this has me rethinking my current pen storage. The smart thing to do would be to have a big enough but small enough pen holder that can fit them all, and in that case, no pun intended. I would save my entire collection. Yeah, keep them all in one case. Maybe a big roll. If I had a big vinyl, a big roll up or something. You'd need <laughs> like a carpet roll. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Jacob Sampson. I'm with Brian. I can't decide. Period. Uh, Marilyn Garner. I'll choose my Pelican M805 in Ocean Swirl. Mm. That being said, yes, there's more. And to Brian's point, it's usually kept in a storage box with nine more of my best pens. So I would just, just grab the whole box. Just be box. easier just to grab it. And yeah, just... yeah. Just grab the whole thing. I am including this one because uh, we can all relate. 
<laughs> Marie Blauvelt. I would save my Pro Gear Slim Spring Rain because it was my first gold nib, a Christmas gift from my sweet husband, who could not for the life of him understand why he was spending so much money on a pen. <laughs> yeah, that's the one yeah. you get. That's the one yeah. you take. Uh, we have a winner. Okay. We have great, a winner. Great. Eric Ferreri. Oh, Ferreira. Yeah. Congratulations. Eric, congratulations. Eric, terrific name. The, your comment is great podcast, guys. I like that. Uh, the one pen I would save happens to be a Mont Blanc Meisterstück ballpoint, exclamation point, okay. in parentheses. Not only because it was given to me by my father, he bought it at the factory in the 80s, but it is the pen I used to sign my wedding documents 28 years ago yep. and every home purchase since. It is truly irreplaceable. Good choice. Yep. Excellent choice. Yep. Uh, Eric, write to me, please. Eric at AndersonPens.com. We will take care of getting your $20 credit to your Anderson Pens account. I have another one, slightly off topic, okay. uh, but has to be read. This is from Lisa DeGroff. <laughs> As always, I loved the podcast and I'm looking forward to the Sunday brunch. However, if you pick this comment to read, you may say that I said that the Sunday brunch was also amazing. And I especially enjoyed your jokes, especially Eric's jokes. Eric's jokes are always better than Brian's jokes. Most of it was there. <laughs> Most of it was there. I have a new contest. Thank you, Lisa. Great. I have a new contest. Uh, and this, uh, because it happened to me, I, I made the mistake of counting something. Okay. Um, I I have a problem with notebooks. Oh. Usually they're hardcover. You and Lisa both. Uh, like an A5 or the A4 plus uh, notebooks. I like notebooks and especially hardcovers. And I buy them because they have great potential, but then I do nothing with them. So my question is, and the answer could be zero. I'd be very proud of you if it's zero. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how many unused notebooks do you have? where you live and i would say they have to be unused more than a week if you still have if you just bought it this week there's still chance okay. yeah. but i have a lot of them that I, I didn't know what i wanted to do with them and i still don't know what i wanted to do because once you do something on page one it's kind of a commitment well and so it has to be i don't it know. has to be pondered so much that i never do anything with them I, I would i would say that i've never used gosh i probably have less than less than three but less, i have i have what i do that is would be two what what i <laughs> Less than three, I guess. What I do, though, is, is I'll get the notebook, and then I'll write something on the first page to see how it writes. And then it's ruined. But then, I, but then I don't, then I don't, but then I don't use it. So I have, like, I probably have five, ten of those. Okay, I guess written, I'm, like, I'm really I've written talking, on the first page. I'm really talking about notebooks that have never been written in at all, even the, the first page. But if you want to answer it your well, way, tell me how many you notebooks you have. Your way. How many notebooks do you have where you only tested the paper and then said, nah, not, not for me? Oh, well, I don't know about that. I mean, anyway, I probably have, yeah. I am interested in how many, because I, I, I... I'll count. Perhaps I am the only one with this problem, this notebook fetish. But uh, let's find out by asking the audience um, and see. Answer me in the comments, and next week we'll do a random drawing of all the people who answered uh, for a $20 gift certificate credit to your Anderson Pens account. And as promised, there is nothing coming soon. Nothing. So why don't we just go for that? I think that's it. Well, Thanks for joining us. Tune in next time for more talk about pens, ink, and paper. You can check us out on social media as Anderson Pens, and I understand... There's a store in Chicago. There is a store in Chicago, ground floor of the Palmer House Hilton. We are open seven days a week. You'll find Lisa there. Does it have a, a website of any kind? Uh, Chicago.AndersonPens.com. Is that, is that what that is? That's a website. Yeah. Chicago.AndersonPens.com. Chicago.AndersonPens.com. Please uh, like this video. Consider uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.